Earlier, Dan, you mentioned the Quebec uh, yeast grain, and it seems to be very, very popular in our in our shop at the moment. What is Quebec yeast? Um, why do you think it's taking home brewing by storm? And how should our customers you know, use the Vos Quebec Ale strain to get the best results in their beer? No, it's kind of a reverse yeast, right? Um, and what I mean by a reverse yeast is that uh, at 40 Celsius, which we usually don't ferment ales at, it is neutral and it can complete a beer in two days. Now around 25 Celsius, it ferments a bit slower, but it has fruity and uh, fruit, fruit like esters and tropical esters. So what's really interesting about that is um, it's completely kind of throwing uh, uh, traditional thoughts on, on ale yeast um, out the window because of, um, you know, how much of a craze this has become. And, you know, uh, my brother's just started home brewing this year and um, he loves it because he can get a beer completed in, in two, three days where it used to take him about seven days. Um, yeah. I've been teaching him to homebrew um, over the phone by a con- correspondence. <laughs> We've been brewing with uh, the, the boss uh, yeast as well, and it's been really fun. We've done three batches, actually, since we've uh, been able to, to use it. And um, the first batch was a Belgian blonde, which we did not have a heat jacket. And it took a longer time to ferment, but it had wonderful, like peachy flavors to it. Uh, and then we uh, also did a uh, an Irish stout with it that fermented in like three days. Wow. Um, but then when, with the heat jacket, we we did that, and then we uh, did uh, the recent big brew day i don't know if people are familiar with that but yes so we used the voss on that and it was done in two days and wow. it was seriously the the uh it was it was wanting to crawl out of the fermenter it was yeah <laughs> so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that too and, and is it a strain that can be used for multiple styles erin because you mentioned they're two quite different styles with the belgian blonde and the um irish stout yeah the irish stout um you, you know you we did have a heat jacket on it so it still kept the Voss kept its neutral flavors it's incredibly diverse in terms of what it can complete bottle conditioning uh you know some people well, more people now probably than ever are kegging, but some people are still bottle conditioning their beers. Um, do they need to add some more yeast when they're bottling their home brew, or, or is it fine just to, you know, wait till terminal gravity and and um, and then add some sugar into the bottles? It is fine to do that, um, but, you know, we have a yeast called CBC1 that is a killer yeast. Now, a killer yeah. yeast, is able to um, stop uh, certain other yeasts uh, f- from fermenting, and some yeasts are killer negative and killer positive, um, oh. and some yeasts won't get affected by it. So our belly saison, for example, um, the killer yeast proteins that are created by CBC uh, does not affect belly saison from continuing to ferment, but uh, other yeasts it does. So okay. yeah, there is there is benefits in using a bottle conditioning yeast. Also, there are some properties um, where that where they can absorb a little bit more oxygen. You've come out with some really interesting new yeasts on the sour side, or, or whether you call them yeast or bacteria, like your wild brew sour pitch. What is that, and how is that different from the regular Lalaman brewing yeast uh, range? So it's actually a bacteria. Both of them are bacteria. Sour pitch is the uh, Lactobacillus uh, plant, uh, plantarum. Yeah. And then the Helveticus is the uh, well, Helvet- Helveticus. Um, so, so the difference between those two uh, is that one is um, homoaffirmative, uh, so yep. it only produces lactic acid. The the uh, the sour pitch is heteroaffirmative, um, and it produces lactic lactic acid and also acetic acid, um, and okay. along with the ethanol and, and CO two. The profiles of them are slightly different. Um, they're basically the the Helveticus produces more of a strong and, and uh, citrus flavor, and yeah. the sour pitch is a little bit more tangy. And how would one use those yeasts to get the best result? Because I guess they're making quite a different beer, aren't they, to an, to the regular ales or, or, or lagers if they're making a, a sour beer. What would be the tips? 
it's all about um, temperature with those with those bacteria. Different temperatures are going to create different flavors. Um, wow. Another thing to note as well, we've we've just um, launched Philly Sour, which is a Lincensia type wow. species, and that's that's a yeast um, that will create uh, lactic acid from glucose. Wow. Uh, so yeah, again, uh, that's that's another one to throw in the mix, um, which is uh, more brewing type fermentation temperatures compared to the um, Lactobacillus. Uh, Plantarum or, or, or Helvinicus, um, temperatures being warmer around the 30 and 40. Um, and on our TDS sheets, we recommend what gives you the best um, flavor profile when you're using uh, Helvinicus or Plantarum for those temperatures. That Philly yeast you mentioned, Dan, is that coming to Australia? Or? It is coming to Australia. It's coming on a container, but yeah, we'll have it in Australia soon. I think, is it, Erin, is, have you guys, you've got it, don't you? You're going to be brewing with it, I think you said at the start of the call. We're actually brewing it with it probably this weekend or next. Diastatesis, what, or I probably mispronounced that. Um, what is it? Um, what strains yep. have it? And do I do, need to do anything in, to manage my brewing process? I'll grab this one as uh, last year I did a presentation on that. Uh, on Thanks, Saturday. Thanks Daniel. Uh, diastaticus. Uh, so diastaticus, one thing big to note, belly saison is a diastaticus, and, and we've always said that on our, on our packaging. So what it means is that the diastaticus basically is going to create an enzyme that, that breaks down the, the complex uh, dextrins, the sugars. It breaks them up and then it's able to ferment it. So it's always going to ferment a lot drier. So it's cutting the D14, D16 branches. Um, so once you know that a saison yeast is is diastaticus, you just need to be a bit safer with it. Now it gets pretty technical um, based on their genes and how you identify it, um, but you just want to make sure you're a bit more sanitary and you understand what you're doing and you're doing those four fermentations that Marie talked about, so you can see where that beer finishes. IO transformation seems to be a buzzword uh, that came out of the haze craze, which um, still is still going. It's alive and well, um, and we sell a lot of your wonderful New England. Um, strain. What What is biotransformation and what Lalaman brewing yeast do you recommend for hazy beers? So but basically some of these yeasts, and look, there's there's a lot of new research on this. There's a lot of things going on. It's not just one thing, but um, mm -hmm. in the research that we've done with um, beta glucosidase, it's essentially breaking up the, um, the yeast is creating the enzyme and certain ones create it, like Nottingham does not, for example, but uh, BIY does, New England does, Kolsch does. Um, it's breaking up the carbohydrate uh, of the hop Yep. And attached to that is an aromatic like linalool, for example. And when it when it breaks that branch, you get a sugar molecule that the yeast can ferment, and you'll get more aroma in your beer. So that's one side of the very very complicated uh, biotransformation research that's going on at the moment. Can I take from that comment that you might be able to make a hazy with BRY97, your New England, and your Colm strains potentially? Yep. That yeast haze, yeast will always come out of solution when it doesn't have a nutrient source. Um, so yeah. some yeast can create a, a bit of haze, um, but but normally the yeast will fall out of suspension. So sure. haze is more going to be coming from uh, additives, uh, protein, or, or things like that. Look, I'd like to formally say a big thank you to you all, especially Erin for being up so late in the US, and, and Marie. I'm thank sorry you for feeding. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Daniel. Um, just before you go, your top tips um, for home brewers trying to get the best out of their beer? I can answer that from Australia. Look, some of the malters have been a little bit drought affected, which is low in free amino nitrogen. Um, now, if you're using yeast nutrients, most yeast nutrients out there are just zinc sulfates, um, which is you do get from malt, it's, it's a little bit harder to be soluble. Yeah. Um, but something like uh, Yeast Life Extra, um, which is uh, zinc sulfate, it's got free amino nitrogen and minerals, is is definitely going to help that yeast get along. I hadn't thought about yeast nutrients. How neglectful of us. Thank you. Erin, what's your top tips for um, home brewers getting the most out of out of their brewing process or, or, and or your yeasts? Well, I'll honestly just say, uh, you know, keep at it. Um, yeah. You know, enter competitions, get get feedback. And uh, keep going and learn as much as you can. Excellent. Thanks, Erin. And Marie, what about you? What would be your top tips for home brewers to, to improve their brewing? From um, all point of view will be uh, cleaning. It's very important. I mean, uh, you have always yeah. to have in mind the quality of the beer. 
uh, because you could do the best beer, but if you have a contamination, that was going to be a, a waste. But uh, from more like a, from a yeast point of view, and uh, uh, it's trying because really uh, now more and more you have uh, the home brewers have the uh, the availability of many yeast. I mean, in the recent year, you have uh, we have launched uh, different yeast for different beer recipe. So just try, try separate your wort. Uh, use uh, different yeast in the same wort, see what it gives, and uh, it's the best, uh, the best, uh, the best stuff to do. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you very much, everyone, and uh, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank bye you. bye.